So uh, yesterday it was announced by Chris Farfoy, uh, I think at the New Zealand School of Broadcasting, that TVNZ and RNZ are definitely going to merger, um, which I think is fantastic. I'm, I've am i been a supporter in, in, of this for a long time. I think the BBC model is absolutely where we'd want to go ultimately. And I think what we're going to do is just give you two minutes of his chat here where he basically lays out uh, why and what. Um, he talks about uh, a group of individuals and uh, government agencies doing research for a couple of years on what they should do, and they came to the conclusion that it should move forward, and that's where we pick up his conversation. The recommendation was to create a modern public media entity that will better meet the needs of New Zealand audiences and address the challenges of technology change, global competition for audiences, and revenue. They also stress the importance of protecting and future-proofing the trust and strength that public media has built up, built up over decades and telling the range of New Zealand stories that reflect our unique corner of the world. As I said earlier, when referring to audience and platform changes, this challenge is already well and truly upon us. So the case for change is there and public media must be a presence in the new and developing world of media consumption, production and delivery. So Cabinet has decided to create that new single public media entity. It will ensure that New Zealanders continue to have access to reliable, trusted, independent information, and local content sits at the heart of the decision to create it. Whether it be COVID, national emergencies, or Olympic Games, in the last few years have shown how important a strong media environment is to reflect New Zealanders' stories, their dreams and aspirations, it is, and it is important we have to we support public media to flourish. A public media entity which is resilient, sustainable, and has the wherewithal to deliver independent, trusted information is absolutely key to that. As I've said, we need public media which is responsive to current challenges of change and can flourish. RNZ and TVNZ are each trying to adjust to the challenges, but our current public media system and setup and the legislation that it's based on does limit their focus to radio and television. The public media is extremely important to New Zealanders, in providing them with high quality, independent, timely and relevant media content. And this is why the government will create a new organisation by the middle of next year, building on the, re building on the best of RNZ and TVNZ to future-proof public media for New Zealanders for decades to come. There you go. There's pretty much the announcement. Let's leave that, that right there now because it is 10 to midday and we are going to welcome into the show from the spin-off, Duncan Grieve. Duncan, good morning. Kia ora. Great to Hi, be Duncan. here. How are you? That I'm is the best sure, backup set that we've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> you win the back, backdrop of the week. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been working my garage basically since Omicron arrived and uh, I'm, I'm loving it, to be honest. Yeah. Good yeah I, can see you, you, I can see you don't live in Dunedin because you've got your garage door up. If you're in Dunedin, <laughs> you have it down with some kind of heater on. Yeah, that's uh, it, it's it's. I think it's going to be like the right climate for about three months total across the year. But I'm in the middle of it, so it's all good. Very yeah. good. Hey, uh, thank you for joining us. We've asked you to come on today to talk about the TVNZ RNZ merger. Just so you know, before you came on, we played a two minute clip from Minister Farfoy, kind of explaining what he was going to do. We wanted to play that before you came on to give us the full kind of ten minutes to chat about good, bad, and different for what this. Uh, your article today off the spin-off TVNZ and RNZ to merge and a not-for-profit giant likely to dominate New Zealand media. Why don't you just give us your initial thoughts about the um, about the merger? Sure. I mean, yeah, I think that the in some ways the I mean, headlines do what, what the headlines do, which is kind of try and grab the, a nugget of what, what the thing is, you know, what, what we're trying to get at, um, but obviously can't tell the whole of it. So, you know, I think that the best case scenario in some ways, what they're aspiring to do, if, if successful, will inevitably do that. Like it's taking TVNZ and RNZ as existing entities, which have nearly uh, $400 million in, um, in revenues between them, pushing them together. And, you know, they, they've made multiple references to the budget, which will no doubt bring more resource for them. And, you know, they're, they're trying to do what those... Um, what those brands do for uh, radio and, and television, do it in the online space. And you know, that's just a much harder place to make money. So when you have that much resource plus more and you remove the profit imperative, they're just, they're gonna be a really formidable foe, assuming that they get the uh, the talent side 
right and um you know, there's a lot of complexity to that and and the establishment board uh the, the makeup of that will be quite instructive but uh you know it's it is quite a momentous uh day even if on the surface of it you know the fact that they'll continue as they are for the time being means that there isn't a tangible thing just yet you say it's a momentous day is it something that you personally think is good or bad like for for a long time i've been talking about you know the bbc model BBC model, how they've got television and they've got radio. And I quite like that idea. I like the idea of potentially having one of the channels being non-commercial and one being commercial. It, it seems to be something as a consumer that I quite like the vibe and feel of. What about you personally? Do you think it's a good or a bad idea? I mean, as with most things, it comes down to execution. I I think there is the, the how you resolve the commercial and non-commercial online will be really interesting, right? Like it's it's very easy to to manage in the kind of uh, the legacy media world, but online picking what what is and isn't going to be um, you know non-commercial is is much more difficult. And you know I think that you know and, and waiting the level of commercial because well, you know the the most extreme end is probably. You know, the, the Herald and Stuff style of online where it's pop-ups and autoplay and, and lots of interruptive advertising, which is what you on some level need to do to make uh, make that work uh, versus the, there's a, a sort of a more minimal ad load. And I've always been struck, and, and probably I get too wound up about this, but I feel like there's a real inequity in that the with RNZ, which has probably got one of the oldest audiences uh, in the country, and that's not really necessarily a critique, it's just it's been around a long time and, and that yep. audience, it's a great product, but it is designed for a specific audience. They get a beautiful commercial free thing for them. And everyone below that get very little public media spend at all. And what they do get is saturated in, in ads and that just doesn't feel fair, you know? So I don't know how that they'll resolve that um, with this. Uh, two things. Um, firstly, I'm not sure if you meant to use the phrase, but you referred to this new entity as being a formidable foe. Um, I mean, how is this going to affect people like the spinoff, for example, but also, I mean, the other major player, uh, people like Discovery and MediaWorks within within the, uh, because on one side, you could say this is an influx of money into this national broadcaster. But on the flip side, and I heard a national spokeswoman say this today, is you may suddenly shift all this advertising money over to someone like Discovery, for example, because they won't be able to spend it um, on TV and Z. And uh, it, I mean, so where where does it sit in balance of, of competition, in, in your view? I mean, again, a lot of this comes down to to sort of system design, but there's a there is a real and and quite grave threat that that um, that, that that this could pose and that you know what what do you compete for in media you know you compete for audience you compete for commercial income and you compete for talent and all of those things um are really hard online you know i think on some level while the old engines of legacy media are still running we have a bit of a a false sense of the robustness of our of our media and that you know tv and Z on demand has a bunch of great shows including local shows the herald has a bunch of great journalism stuff has a bunch of great journalism the fundamentals of what are powering that uh financially are still newspapers and television advertising you remove that and the whole thing is quite different you know so the um you know and, and when you're in that situation you've got a not-for-profit that gets a huge chunk of government money and we're, we're talking you know like legacy media has been stickier than anyone thought you know they were talking about shutting down the print sydney morning herald you know 10 years you know in 2013 yeah. 14 and that proved to be vastly premature um but you know at some point these things do you know sunset um and that could be five years away 10 years away but this is about imagining that future and so there is a world where that the government basically comes to dominate the the media um both from a journalism and a more sort of uh, entertainment uh, or, or cultural side in a way that would i think genuinely um you know be disquieting to people what they've mentioned um in this is, is that they want to collaborate and partner with with private sector media and I, I guess that is the the sort of key hope is that um they actually partner with commission 
fund elements of the private sector media to maintain that plurality and to get a more diverse uh, sort of product range for this new entity. That that is probably the only way that it doesn't have a corrosive effect on the the um, the relationship between the state state media and private sector media. I mean, what, second... would, what would you hope is that it's because it's not competition because if they if they're a model that doesn't need to provide profit because they're a public entity that means other media sources to it aren't necessarily competition and that for re at least for revenue so well, they no, should be able to support they should be able to support and work with other groups as well but i don't think that that's they're certainly not signaling that right they're, they're saying this is going to have commercial and non-commercial elements so you know if you're you know discovery sales team or the spin-off sales team for that matter that means that you're going to a, a meeting where someone can price 20% below you for the same thing effectively right. because they don't have to um, make a margin. Notwithstanding the fact that you also have the fact of being government on your side, like, you know, my feeling is, um, and, and I've issued OIAs to, to um, find this out and they, they're refusing to say where they've made this spend, but there was $87 million um, spent on the, the, the COVID-19 campaign. Obviously, really important uh, work had to happen, but where that money was spent is really interesting, I think, and important to, to know. How much of it went to Facebook? How much of it went to YouTube? You know, How much of it went to TVNZ? And they're, they're refusing to say, which I think is, you know, I've appealed to the ombudsman. I I'm, I'm remain very curious about that. But fundamentally, like, based on, you know, what the, the sort of purely anecdotal consuming different media as, as you know i do in a quite a hyperactive way there was a lot of this stuff on tvnz it felt like more there than almost anywhere else and government is an increasingly large player in, in the communications business already so there's a, a sort of a second order of consequence to this where the government is likely to shop at the government's uh, store if you if you take my um, yeah yeah i mean I've got a slightly more lighthearted question. Well, in a way, but it's a, it's a serious question as well, is you and I, uh, Duncan, I know, I mean, we've both worked um, at TVNZ and at RNZ. Uh, we've both been in both of those buildings. The mm. cultures are very different. Um, I mean, just the vibe when you walk into either of those buildings. I mean, how, how do you see those two cultures coming together as one entity? Um, I mean, no, look, I think that's actually a great question, and it's both life life light-hearted and deadly serious i think yeah absolutely like, I, I i mean it yeah um because they don't naturally merge you know they, mm. they the commercial was split off from from rnz when when it sold zb you know 25 plus years ago uh you know tvnz has has had a commercial mandate for longer than that again and the the world of hunting what you eat versus you know uh it just being handed to you once a year it's just it creates an entirely different dynamic and imperative and there's good and bad in it like i i i, I think both of them have fantastic and really interesting cultures but they aren't naturally compatible one will likely devour the other so you know the the merging of them has the potential for you know like you're, you're doing an arm transplant like the, the body might reject the uh, this new limb um, and and so I think whether whether who was chosen to lead it I think both Paul Thompson and um, some of the incoming TBNZ CEO are uh, keen on it um, you know whether they can both sort of coexist that doesn't tend to happen in these situations will be really instructive about which culture eats the other I mean, just on pure scale, TVNZ obviously is is the more likely um, yeah. there. But certainly, I think the government has much more of a fondness for for RNZ. I mean, right. our, this really came out of the RNZ Plus idea, which was clear current in the twenty seventeen um, uh, manifesto. Um, they've announced this merger to happen in the middle of next year, Duncan. Do you think any part of this is going to be a positive leading up to the next election? And I also thought, should National win the next election, could that impact this at all? I think you know if, if National is just playing this politically, like the you, you game that out. I think using this as a an example of government largesse, largesse of solving a problem that fundamentally I don't think anyone is asking them to solve. Like a, there isn't a large constituency of people saying, "I like TVNZ and, and RNZ, or, you know, one or the other," and I think they should be put together. That, that is not you know 
Paul Thompson was asked that by Guy on, on Morning Report today and whether an audience member has ever, ever said that to him. And the answer was no. So I think there is an open political constituency for this. That doesn't mean it isn't something that should happen. That's that's a sort of a different question. But, you know, fundamentally, like, the the, the this is frameable as a, a bad thing. It might even be something that is, um, you know, is to to you know it's hard to do and fundamentally doesn't um doesn't actually make sense like that that is all to, sort of yet to be written but uh yeah i think there's a chance that national looks hard at this and goes actually we will make this one of the things that we um attack the government on and we make one of our campaign promises to not to mess with your beloved tvnz or rnz and we'll undo it and so you know while it has been announced and the, the wheels are in motion. This is actually something that is, for the time being, relatively easily unwound. Yeah. Right. Hey, Duncan, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate your insights. Duncan uh, Gray from the spinoff. Uh, we really, yeah, it's really good to have your thoughts in, around that. And, and congratulations on the spinoff. I don't think I've ever said this to you because actually you're looking at the models that are happening around the country of like independent media and media outside that sort of traditional media that's been around for 40 years and i don't think anyone does it as good as you guys um so well done on that and thanks for joining us today we really appreciate your time oh no thanks so much for having me on and you know this is an absolutely an example of the kind of innovation that, <laughs> that the media desperately needs and uh, yeah and appreciate your kind words all right thank you dude all the best cool. cheers